Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we have an unboxing video. This game's hot off the press. It's just arrived today. Um, I work overnights right now and I woke up and what do you know, there was a present waiting for me. So um, this is not the typical solitaire game that I cover on my channel. So um, I think it, I believe some, some of the standard combat series games, we'll get into that, um, of like chip pull and things like that to make it a little more solitaire friendly. I'm pretty sure Rostov 41 Race to the Dawn um, is just a straight I go, you go style, but we'll take a look at it. I do enjoy playing those games sometimes. Um, no, you know, they're not true, true solitaire games, so that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just got to push around some hexes and counter, or push around some hexes, push around some counters. Sorry, guys, I did just wake up. Um, push around some counters um, and all that good stuff, so... All right, so Rostov 41, Race to the Dawn. I had pre-ordered this quite a while ago, I believe. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. I am not an Eastern Front nut. I know there are a lot of you guys out there, so please fill me in. Uh, comments below. Let us know, you know, a little bit more about this, maybe. But um, I do know that series designer, obviously Dean Essig, yep, with uh, it's a standard combat series game, so, which I do own a bunch of those, just because, you know, yeah, they're not solitaire um you know, designed, but they are, I think they're pretty, they're easy to solitaire just because they're really easy rules, so it's just easy to play, um, play back both sides. Um, one interesting thing, Ray, uh, game designer is Ray Weiss, who, he started Conflict Simulations Limited, a uh, wargaming company, and they've been releasing war games. I haven't been able to try many of their games yet, but I'm anxious to, to start. Um, there's some games that are solitaire friendly coming out soon, so I want to check those out, so. Anyway, that, that kind of helped me, but actually I pre-ordered this before I even realized Ray, Ray Weiss had started that company. So, all right, Rostov 41, Race to the Dawn. Um, Rostov 41 is a standard combat series game. So for those who don't know, standard combat series is just a, it's like a series of rules. So this game inside will have the, com the standard combat series rulebook, version 1.8, which you can find online. Um, and then the Rostov 41 game specific rulebook. The rulebook for the standard combat series, I believe, is something like eight pages. It is not a long rulebook. Um, standard combat series, it could be called simple combat series. It's very basic hex encounter style gaming, um, which I, I like. So, uh, it's a standard combat series game covering the bold, some would say foolhardy, dash by Army Group South to take Rostov in the late fall of 1941. Amazingly, this attack succeeded, resulting in the Germans being isolated at the end of a long logistical shoestring. Regrouping Red Army, stung from a long series of defeats, saw this as the perfect opportunity to launch its first coordinated attack of the war, thus paving the way for the Moscow counteroffensive just a few weeks later. Very cool. Again, like I said, I'm not a Eastern Front nut, so I don't know a whole lot about all this, but hey, that's what some of these sometimes that's what these games are for, is for learning. At least for me anyway, because I don't know everything yet. So Alright, um has some scenarios that are only gonna be a couple turns, so I like that. Um Complexity, medium, solitaire, suitability, medium. Okay, so, you know, again, not designed for solitaire, but should be solvable. Um, components, the rule books, 280 counters, so it's one counter sheet, one full-size 22 by 34 map, the four scenarios. So, all right, let's go ahead and open her up, check it out. I'm trying to think. There was something else I wanted to say about this game, other than the fact that I kind of I just saw the notice. I was like, hey, this game is closing to pre-orders, and I went... What is this? Oh, hey, what do you know? I pre-ordered this like a while, right, right away when it first uh, was announced or whatever, put up on MMPs. Oh, of course, published by Multiman Publishing. My bad. All right. So it's a super light box. It's a, I mean, it's a full-size box, but it's not thick. It's very light because it's just going to be a paper map, a sheet of counters, and a couple um, small rule books. So, but it's type of game where you know, like I said, it's you're going to get a lot of gameplay out of it. I'm guessing based on. I think my favorite standard combat series game is um, Screaming Eagles, Race to Bastogne, Drive to Bastogne, whatever it's called. That's a really good one. Fun topic, of course. Right. Um, okay, thank you. Oh, of course. You're welcome. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. A couple little dice. I've got 10 million. Add that to the... I have 10 million and one. All right. Um, this up, the, uh, looks like this is the actual game rules as opposed to series rules okay yep so let's look at series rules first just real quick it's so like i said before standard combat series gonna be real short yep total of eight pages and then eight pages and that includes this designer note page so if you look at the first page and then page seven pages and there are even examples it's not color um 
a little bit of a bummer because I print off online and usually I print all my stuff off when I get it from online. But you can find this online, guys, if you want to check it out. If you've never heard of Combat Series, Standard Combat Series, or just want to have a, the updated rules 1.8, they're on they're on uh, MMP's website, maybe the gamer's website. Google it, you'll find it. Um, but anyway, mine always print off in black and white, you know, save ink, unfortunately. So I was kind of hoping I'd get some color here, color action, but that's okay. All right. So anyway, yep. It'll very simple. Like I said, it's clearly seven pages of rules, just very standard. Um, and we'll I'll explain a little bit more as we get to the counters. So the actual game rule book is eight pages with these tables, the terrain effects, combat table, artillery roll. Um, oh, and then the setup. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> looks, looks like fun, doesn't it? Ah. Uh, okay. So setup can be a little bit. Fun with these games sometimes, and by fun I mean you know a lot of work because it's got a lot of little counters, but that's okay. It's okay. It's worth it in the end, right, guys? Actually, literally looks like special rules: page one, page two, page three, and then it starts the scenarios, and that is the rest of it. The rest of it is the scenarios. So, um, okay. And so it looks like we're gonna have the um, charts on the back of the uh, game rule book. I don't think they're going to be separate. A little bit of a bummer. Too bad it's not a player aid chart. What I'll do is I'll just copy it. Well, that's what I always do. So just take my printer. You know, it's got the little photocopy thing. And I'll just like I'll photocopy this part and set it up next to my game. That's what I do with any game that doesn't have a separate player aid sheet. So no big deal. All right. Let's look at these counters. So um, it's going to be the standard uh, standard combat series. Normal counters are half inch counters. So Yep, they are getting, it's getting to be, these are the smaller type counters out there. Um, good thickness, though, actually. I feel like, I know it's really hard to tell on camera, guys, but I feel like this. these are actually thicker than the usual, um, usual uh, standard combat series style counters, half inch counters, so that's nice. Um, anyway, so you do, they are half inch, um, that's really what you get, I believe, with every standard combat series game. Again, it's more of this traditional, right, so they feel, I feel like, First game probably came out early 90s, so they have a real, you know, old school Wargamer vibe. Old school to me. Um, I know some people think old school Wargames from, you know, 70s, early 80s, before I was born. But um, anyway, they look good. Um, they're easy to read. Yes, if you're, you know, far, uh, far distance all the way across the map, sometimes, um, you know, it can be a little hard to read some of these. But for the most part, it stands out. I like the fact that it's not, they're not all just... Uh, black here, you know, black, black, white. I'm sure there's a special role for the reason they're the white. I cannot remember, though. But uh, one of the keys of the game and of the rules is kind of the difference between infantry and then um, mechanized forces, tanks, that can do, um, have a separate movement, um, an additional movement possible, and then can exploit. So they can, you know... It, and this that the key is separate between them. I'm not gonna I don't know the rules, I don't know if the rules memorize, even though it's pretty easy to game to play. Um at least pretty easy series rules. You can see the yellow stripe on the counters, and that's gonna denote, you know, hey, these are mechanized units and they so they have kind of additional capabilities exploiting. Um I can't remember all the terms, but basically making showing them differentiating them, right? Make them a little better. So it's not just okay, here's a you know, ton of counters. They have some, you know, different combat factors, and that's it. I mean, there are different abilities based on what they are. Um, obviously, you can do... Uh, I'm trying to see what we have for artillery. Yep, see, the artillery is on map artillery. So if you look here, you know, and obviously Soviet here, German here. Um, you can see, like, the on map artillery will have a range factor tucked in there in between, in between there. So let's see that three, three for the artillery. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else, anything else special. So again, I mean, it's pretty standard. I, I can only assume that the unit designations and names on these counters, which, you know, it can easier to see, you know, on the right hand side here, the 253rd rifle. Um, I can only assume that these are very accurate, historically accurate. They always do a great job, um, with the history in these games, following orders of battle, things like that. I know very little about those things, especially with the Eastern Front and any specific battle or operational battle in the area in the Eastern Front, so I cannot comment on that at all, but all I know is this one says Vikings, so that's pretty cool, so. All right, um, the punch out, uh, super easy. Oop. All right, here we go. 
Counters punch out super easy. Um, I'll definitely clip the corners, but that's that's me. I don't like little fuzzies on the corner, but that's okay. Um, yeah, they are pretty good thickness. They're definitely good thickness. Um, you know, clearly they're not the level of quality of a you know separately game that's printed in China where they do the you know individually die punch big counters like I think DVG or um, Compass Games Deluxe Editions, but still they're gonna work. They'll work on the table. Um, some of these will stand out more than others, but you should be able to get get some gameplay in and enjoy it. So, all right, enough look at the counters, guys. Let's go ahead. Um, you know what? I'm not going to pause the video because it's going a little long. I like to keep my unboxings around 10 minutes because I need to bore you guys. Let's go ahead. I'll unfold it here. It's probably exciting, all right? Hear me unfolding it? Yeah, there we go. All right, so paper map, obviously. Um, this game is also very, I could say, inexpensive. Um, so... so you can't complain too much about the paper map and the the thinner. Well, it's not actually they're not thin counters, but the smaller counters. That's because you have the small hexes. If you had bigger counters, you'd have to enlarge the map. Then you'd have at least a two mapper. So, all right. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see very much from up there. There's Rostov itself. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of a train key um, up here. Other map symbols. It's up there in the corner. Let's see. Is it readable from a distance? Yeah, it's readable from a distance. No problem there. Um, here's Rostov, the drive for Rostov itself. Um, see of Azov. Again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these pronunciations. Airstrikes available for both sides. And we have a turn, turn chart, your bottom left, if you can see that, guys. So let's go ahead. Actually, I'm going to take the camera off the mount. So don't get sick. Camera's about to start moving. Close your eyes. Oh, we're coming in hot. All right, so let's take a look at this bad boy up close. Okay, I think it looks good. Um, nice and simple, nice and easy. Who did the map? I think I skipped that over. I don't think I saw it. Yeah, that's seen in the book and the, the cover or in the, in the box. Anything, guys? Anything? Anyone speak up? Who did this map? Artwork. Box. No. Well, Nicholas is Scooby. The box is cool. Thanks, Nicholas. Counter maps and charts. Dean Essay. Well, there you go. Dean, the man himself. So, good job, Dean. Looks good. Um, not going to win awards here for, you know, oh my god, the most beautiful map. But I'm sure it's easy to play, and I have no experience playing this game. But based on my experience with other um, standard combat series games, this will be easy to play. Full-size map. You know, it's definitely... Kind of set up almost like for solitaire because you know you got the one the turn counter down here airstrikes everything's facing you know the south um set up ready to go and i'll probably play this game i don't know if i'll film it just because i don't know if that's really fair to you guys to try to show off this you know i go you go very two-player-esque game on my channel that focuses on solitaire games so um but that is rostov 41 not too bad looking huh please check it out uh this was not a not a review copy, not provided by them. I pre-ordered this a while back. Um, but still, feel free to check it out. See if it's something you're interested in. Uh, it's on sale now, and uh, I don't think it's that expensive. So, all right. Till next time, guys. Later.